Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content, and I'm delighted to say that joining me on the program today are Nicola Marziliano, who is Vice President, International Telco Sales at Wind River, and Sadayuki Abeta, who is Global Head of Open RAN Solutions and OREX Evangelist at NTT Docomo. Hello and good to see both of you. Thanks so much for taking part in our program today. Now, a better sign, if I could start by asking you, could, could you explain more about OREX? What is it and why are both you and Wind River involved? Uh, thank you. So Open LAN Ecosys Experience uh, provide the all -run solution. That means that uh, uh, not, you know, uh, provide that uh, 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 consulting, not only providing that uh, test, uh, we uh, provide that solution itself. So we are working with that the many partners, of course, including Wind River, and uh, provide that the pre-integrated solution. That means that uh, we have tested, including that uh, so software, hardware, platform, everything. And we also do the interoperability test between that uh, so uh, CUDU and RU. So operators more easily introduced open RAM. So they don't need to do the interoperability test. Of course they want to, we can support. So uh, OREX uh, introduce or provide the uh, OLAN solution more uh, simply. So this is good progress, Abeta San, but what barriers have you experienced so far with VRAN and Open RAN, and what have you done to break through them? Yes, uh, I talked with many operators, but they say that uh, the system integration is uh, uh, brand new for the most of operators because uh, they have not uh, done the interoperability or integration by themselves. So past year, uh, the vendor provide the uh, pre-integrated integrated or a total solution. So that's uh, the operator just use it. But open RAN, we have the multiple component. Then we need to integrate, we need to do the interoperability test. So this is one of the barrier for that uh, operators. So to help the operators, so we do the integration or interoperability uh, by uh, Oryx. So we support or we provide solution itself. So they are more easy to uh, introduce open RAN without experience or without additional staff for the integration and interoperability test. I see. And Nico, can you tell us how Entity Docomo and Wind River are collaborating to overcome these barriers and make open RAN easier to deploy? Yes, many, many thanks for the question. Let me follow up uh, what Abeta san uh, just uh, said and mentioned. It is evident that uh, Oren uh, introduced a lot of opportunity, but as well as uh, <clears throat> a few challenges. And those challenges uh, just mentioned about uh, interoperability, testing, uh, validation, but uh, last but not least, also vendor selection and uh, solution uh, decision. <clears throat> Something that not all, all the carriers, the operator in the world that can afford uh, pragmatically to, to pursue. Of course, there are uh, big players that are capable and they are pursuing these initiatives, but many others are uh, looking at uh, with the less uh, capability. That is exactly where Entity Docomo and WindRiver start collaborating as part of the blueprint design, uh, Orex uh, uh, team uh, decided to implement, and we start uh, collaborating in different areas and aspects of the Orex uh, journey. So from the lab uh, design, uh, where you need to bring the uh, solution suppliers into the labs, into the validation, into the verification, into, into the operability. But I would say probably even more relevant <clears throat> into the deployment phase, because one of the uh, additional challenges, not only the design phase uh, and the blueprinting, but is also the next phase of deploying in field, which is exactly what now the collaboration between Docomo and Wind River is now further strengthening to go in field, uh, which means uh, getting out of the lab and, and do the physical deployment uh, when you go directly. 
Uh, that is, uh, I would say, the, the strongest part of the uh, Docomo Wind River. But of course, Wind River specifically then has, I would say, three years where we are primarily uh, contributing in overcoming some of those barriers. So the first one and evident is the works we are doing with a standard. Uh, Wind River is very active in the uh, Linus Foundation into the TIP uh, and as well as in the Orange Alliance where we are the key contributor in the standard uh, creation uh, as well as we are collaborating with the strategic partners and at top of those uh, Intel um, which is a, you know is a strategic partner in many of the uh, hardware um, integration we are doing as well as with Dell that is collaborating with us with a pre-integrated solution. And then finally, I would say the third point is uh, <clears throat> we are uh, creating and uh, engaging with clients in what we call acceleration workshop, initiatives that are uh, quite relevant in an area of new competence creation, where the competence gap is, is pretty critical and evident. So we are trying to overcome the, the learning curve uh, challenge into the operator side. Thank you, Nico. Obviously, a lot of collaboration going on. And a better sign, why did you select Wind River as one of your OREX partners? And what are your expectations for this collaboration with Wind River? Uh, we, we selected uh, many uh, partners. Of course, uh, Wind River is uh, our most very important partner. So uh, you know that we are the uh, mobile operators and we have uh, experience of the mobile area. Uh, not only that uh, uh, deployment, not, uh, not only that uh, so optimization of the networks. So uh, the OREX, we have that uh, uh, vendors uh, which working for the uh, mobile area long time. And uh, we will have the uh, vendors or partners uh, working for the IT area. So the, this uh, OREX, I think that uh, we have the uh, great combination between the mobile and the IT area. And Wind River, uh, they have the capability. So they have, as uh, uh, Nico already mentioned that the, he, they have their uh, work, on, work for that the Linux Foundation and open source. So they have, and they have already deployed that uh, mobile uh, VLAN uh, somewhere area in the world. So they, they are a uh, uh, very nice experience. So uh, working over that uh, Wind River, so we have the, uh, you, with our experience, with their experience, I think that we can provide that uh, VLAN solution, uh, not to that big uh, operator, but to the uh, small operator, because we know that uh, uh, how to deploy uh, in the mobile network and how to uh, engage that IT area, how to simplify that the operation, both the uh, operational point view and the uh, uh, IT view and mobile view. So Wind River has uh, uh, much capability and much experience. So we selected uh, uh, Wind River as a partner. That's good to hear. And Nico, parity between open RAN and let's say traditional RAN equipment seems to be the first hurdle towards open RAN deployments. So how are you addressing this? That is really great question. <laughs> Actually, we are addressing on multiple areas. Uh, <clears throat> we are engaged uh, to, to simplify it and at least to address uh, in a certain areas. Uh, let, me, let me articulate the story. And let me start also from the, the fact that it is evident that RAN in the traditional deployment, it's a decade that is now uh, progressing and reaching a, a superiority and a maturity level that is, of course, a, is there. So it's undisputable. Uh, the question is that that is also creating the limit of that approach. And that is becoming very evident. I mean, our RAN technology is uh, maturing enough now to get closer to the same uh, performance uh, parity of uh, the traditional run, as well as introducing uh, new uh, flexibility and um, end use case. When I'm thinking about that, I'm, I'm imagining the Mac, uh, the edge use case that may enable on the same location to uh, additionally deploy uh, more workload than uh, the typical traditional run. 
uh, can do it, which is basically a radio connectivity. Uh, as well as in a scenario of run sharings where you have a different operator sharing the same technology or same site or the same uh, equipment, uh, which uh, till now has been a limit. I think that uh, Oran is per se is a technology that will do faster, better, uh, and uh, and elegant in a modern way. Um, but that is not only the the, the single aspect of Oran, uh, which is differentiating from traditional RAN. Uh, there is a clearly a fundamental aspect of innovation. Now, of course, being an innovation is not uh, self-evident or immediate, but uh, just to, to mention one that, uh, in my opinion, is one of the, the key aspects is uh, we have been uh, just recently um, announcing uh, the Intel <coughs> uh, fourth generation um, uh, software rapid uh, capability that is now uh, enabling uh, the carriers uh, to have uh, you know 1.5 uh, performance gain uh, as well as you know 2x time capacity uh, having you know 50 percent power consumption which means that uh, you can run the same workload uh, with a half of it uh, in terms of uh, hardware requirement and uh, having the same performance which is Link to the final aspect, I, I would say, that is the energy efficiency and the energy saving. Uh, one of the critical aspects in radio is uh, clearly the power consumption. Uh, one of the critical aspects, the, the more we go to 5G, is going to be uh, power consumption. And of course, having a means uh, to optimize the, the utilization of power and the energies uh, in, the, in, the, in the carriers is, is going to be key and crucial. And Oran as a technology that will give not only the infrastructure uh, uh, saving, meaning uh, optimizing the uh, the hardware utilization, as well as uh, automating with uh, AI, uh, ML uh, capability, the automatic and intelligent allocation of uh, slots, as well as CPUs and uh, power consumption. So activating and deactivating um, carriers, as well as uh, baseband or eventually uh, CPUs. Uh, one of the last examples is that uh, we have been uh, validating with the Oran Alliance, <clears throat> the possibility to, by tracing the, um, uh, the C state of the CPUs, uh, identifying the idle moment of the hardware and uh, deactivating or activating uh, the CPU, which has a direct implication of uh, power consumption uh, reducing immediately uh, the energies, uh, the energy utilization of the base station. So that is just an example. Of course, as I said, it's it's a, uh, it's a, in itinerary is a, is a journey, uh, but uh, the signal we are seeing is are very promising, and and we're getting there. Great, thanks for those insights, Nico. And finally, Abetasan, where does OREX go from here? What are your future plans? I think first I, I should say that why we create uh, Oryx uh, this timing. Uh, one reason is, you know, uh, that we create open ecosystem two years ago, and we are working with partners and creating the region. And now uh, we change the name Oryx. The reason the uh, product itself is uh, now it's competitive. The mean that the performance we can achieve the better performance with the uh, accelerator and uh, uh, Sapphire Rapid, which you know that Nico really mentioned. So from the uh, capacity point of view and also power consumption view. So I think that the VR is now is competitive and uh, we are now ready to provide a solution to the operators. That's one reason we create the OLX uh, this time. So uh, what we are uh, uh, doing, uh, so we started the discussion with operator already, and some of the operators interested in to use our uh, solutions. And someone already started the POC, and uh, we are discussing the operators uh, doing the field trial. So uh, they uh, prefer to use our pre-integration solution because it's simple. And we are also working with the vendors to simplify operation itself. So uh, for, for VLAN, we need some 
additional integration or need a life cycle management since that the, the, they are the much vendor and the, not sure the, how often they upgrade. But we work with the partner and simplify the life cycle management itself. For example, that uh, half a year uh, update, like uh, uh, existing system. So operator is more easy to deploy, more easy to commercialize the open run. So we are uh, proposing the solution to the operator now. And we also provide that uh, uh, shared lab since that uh, to do that, uh, uh, to see the performance or to do that the POC test, we need that uh, the equipment, they need the equipment. But if they create that, uh, so, you know, uh, the equipment test lab, it's costly and it takes a time. So some of the operators are interested in to use our uh, open share lab to see the performance. Then if necessary, uh, they would do that uh, lab POC or they directly go to that uh, field trial. It depends operators. So we already started the discussion uh, or uh, proposal to that operators. So uh, I think uh, uh, within this year, uh, we can accelerate and uh, uh, the operator can accelerate. So do the uh, trial. I think the commercial timeline may be that the uh, so 2020, uh, 2024 or uh, something like that. But uh, we will start the POC and the field trial in this year. And we start the discussion already, also uh, together with the Wind River. I think we all look forward to hearing developments later in the year. But for now, we must leave it there. I better sign and Nico, good talking with both of you. And thank you so much for joining us on the program today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a good day.